I do. I love working here. It's nice. There's not many places that you can work and casually have the cats just sat around the office keeping you company. It's never a dull day. This is All Creatures Great and Small, a sanctuary based in South East Wales since 1992. The sanctuary rehabilitates and rehomes injured, abused, unwanted and orphaned animals. In this documentary, we will explore how an animal sanctuary is run, from dedicated volunteers and team members to fundraising events. Mum, can we have one? So I've been here two years now and we've been through quite a few dogs. A couple of tears have been shed. <laughs> Coming up. We meet Lord Cranberry. A litter of kittens is brought in. I'd have them myself, but I got dogs, see? And we meet Hunter, who has been at the sanctuary for 10 months. He needs um, somebody who's very experienced, very, you know, in handling dogs, because he can be quite temperamental. With the help of team members and dedicated volunteers, the sanctuary has given a new life to forgotten pets. Set in Cumbran, the sanctuary rehomes dogs, cats, rodents, birds, and farm animals. One of the dogs is Hunter, a whippet, who has been at the sanctuary for 10 months. Helen is currently exercising Hunter. Um, my name's Helen. Um, I work voluntary at the sanctuary on a Saturdays and sometimes um, in the week um, when I'm off on holiday. Um, it's important to work here. I work with the dogs on a Saturday. It's important, um, I think, to work here and to get the dogs exercised. Um, to see a variety of people and also to get them socialised, to get them exercised and it's good for me and it's good for them because I get an awful lot out of it as well. Um, Hunter's in the field at the moment, he's been here I'd say one, that, one of the longest, um, he's one of the bigger dogs, more boisterous dogs, hence the reason why he's still here I think. Um, he needs um, somebody who's very experienced, very you know, in handling dogs because he can be quite temperamental. But he's lovely. He's my favourite at the moment. So. <laughs> the sanctuary has kennels on site where dogs can live until they're adopted. I think there's about nine at the moment. Um, the maximum they take is 11. So um, walking schedules are usually down to about 15, 20 minutes um, by the time you know we've done every one of them. They all get a walk in the afternoon in the field and then they get their morning walk around the sanctuary. So this is their exercise in the afternoon. He tends to need short spurts of exercise because he, he is, um, well, he was bred for a, to, to be a hunting dog originally. So um, his speed um, is what he reacts to. So to keep him in good top condition and to keep him behaving like a dog, he needs, he needs the exercise. He needs to be able to run. So the run in the field in the afternoon is very important to him. He needs to let off steam and, um, well, to keep his muscles and his, his uh, body in trim. Dogs like Hunter are difficult to rehome, as some people are unable to look after his breed. Some of them, yes, the larger dogs. We've got another dog here, Max, um, who's a lurcher. He's a very large dog. Um, there seem to be trends in dogs that people like. The smaller dogs, the better. Um, we've got a pug in at the moment, which she, uh, she will have no problem in rehoming. But the larger dogs tend to take the longest, because they can be you know, more of a handful and you need to, you know, experienced owners, really. You said um, Hunter was your favourite. He is. Is there any reason for that? Because I've got a lurcher very similar to him. Um, she's a female and she's totally loopy and I just love their character. Um, they do tend to have an element of madness about them which I like. Um, 
he's just adorable. He can have his quirks and he can run at you. He looks like he's going to run straight into you, but he won't. He knows what he knows his limits, and uh, he's got very uh, good sight, good visual sight. So that he is, he's lovely. So I've been here two years now, and we've been through quite a few dogs. A couple of tears have been shed <laughs> when your favourites go, but it's good. It's good that um, they're rehomed. Can it be sad when you rehome or will you be sad when Hunter goes? Um, sad in as much as I won't see him again, but happy knowing that he's got a good home to go to um, rather than being here. None of them want to be here. They're very well looked after here. They're very well exercised, fed well. Um, everybody's so caring here, but ultimately their goal is to find them, you know, a forever home, which um, all the dogs deserve. So, um, yes. The sanctuary is getting busy preparing a rehoming event. This is when the public gets to visit the sanctuary and hopefully choose an animal to rehome forever. Potential owners have to satisfy the sanctuary's rules for each animal. It's a chance for a dog like Hunter to get rehomed. Um, the adoption process for our domestic animals is usually, especially if it's a cat or a dog, involves a home visit. So initially the person will come in, take a look at the cats and dogs that we have on site, have a chat with our animal welfare team, where they'll usually match them up with what would be you know, most appropriate in their circumstances, what would get on best with them. Um, once that decision has been made, they'll put down a reserve, and in the meantime, whilst that reserve is on one of our animals, we will do a home visit assessment just to make sure that everything is sufficient and satisfactory for them to move in. Welcome back to Hunter soon. It's feeding time for the pigs at the sanctuary. Yvonne, a local volunteer, is in the cattery. Um, well, I volunteer and I help with cleaning and I also help with the fundraising. But basically, you have to take the bedding out, give it a good brush or alternate or change it, spray the cabin and wash it all over and dry it out. And similarly, the steps, the steps come apart and, um, and that part that actually drops down. But don't, that doesn't need to be done every time, but obviously when the cabins become empty, everything's emptied out, taken out and sprayed and left 12 hours, sometimes longer, so that uh, there's no cross-contaminations and stuff like that happening. It's easy for both staff and volunteers to become attached to animals waiting to be adopted. Um, last week and the week before, we had a cat called Summer and one called... Um, April in there. April was a, had had a kittens here and some of but they, they went last week, but they were my favourites. Um, April went first and then Summer went. Um, at the moment, well, I, I hadn't met um, Jess until this morning, but she's got four kittens, three, about three or four kittens, and they're in sick bay at the moment. Um, and she's lovely, she's a lovely cat, but it's my first time to meet her, so I haven't really had a chance to make friends. Um, like I say, some cats are really clean, and some just make a mess. I mean, with, this, uh, with the litter, you know, they're going like that with the litter, and it goes everywhere. I mean, I've always loved animals. As a, as a kid, I loved animals. I used to go with my brother and catch the horses, the wild horses, <laughs> stuff like this. I've always loved animals, and we've always had, we used to have animals at home. Some animals, like Gypsy, don't get adopted quickly because of medical reasons. This one prefers dried food. They're on ID food only, which is what I'll give them now. She's on Purina dried, so you have to look to see what everybody's having. With the um, with Gypsy, this one, she's got a slight renal problem, so she has to have that one. Uh, but otherwise than that, they have the normal. Whoever takes Gypsy will have to um, be aware and be willing to uh, get the special food, which of course isn't isn't cheap. Anything that you've got to get from the vets is um, more expensive. They're not so tough to buy from the supermarket. 
They don't want to pay that. They don't want to. They don't want the hassle. Um, sometimes people think, "Well, I don't. I don't want to be doing that." So they have an order, and one that's healthy. But uh, some people don't mind. It's not unusual for an animal to be born at the sanctuary. It's only just saying that they were born. Yeah, date of birth is seventh of the fifth, so they were born here. Yeah. In fact, the mother was either April or summer. Well, one of these was reserved the other week, but we weren't very happy because we wanted the two to go together. I think we persuaded them not to. We want them to either have the two, you know, uh, if, if possible, to have the two together. I don't think they wanted to do that, so they said no, they, they'd wait. But these two seem to really, well, they haven't been apart, and they love one another, you know? And then um, I think, well, we were all saying, oh, can we go together? So that was tried with the people, and they don't know they wanted to. Right, I've got to get them in now. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Coming up, a litter of kittens is brought in. I was like, oh my god. But, uh, this is happening loads lately.